hard road that was to lead him far away from home. Now the sun glowed blood red and trickled behind the distant hills. The boy shivered, for the way ahead was disappearing into the last gleams of twilight. Then, as if by magic, something or someone stepped out of the shadows. God. At first in fear, and then in wonder. Before him stood a gentleman, so richly dressed that Hans would have taken him for a king, if it had not been for his tall, pointed hat. It was as black as night, and stars and moons sparkled on it. Beneath the hat, the gentleman's eyes sparkled too. He smiled down at the boy and introduced himself. This was Bellbinder, the sorcerer in person. that I am out searching for an apprentice, Joe. <laughs> and you are just what I had in mind. Hans could hardly believe his eyes, his ears, or his luck as he followed Spellbinder down a winding path away from the hard road. I know, my boy, he said, but can you read and write? Hans nodded eagerly, but Spellbinder's smile froze. Too bad, he smiled, and vanished into the dark. The boy's quick wit gave him another chance. Read and write, he called out. I thought you said, eat and fight. Reading and writing are a mystery to me. Congratulations, cried the sorcerer as he reappeared before the boy. Hans was hired again on the spot. It was only a hop, a skip, and a bridge. To the moving steps that carried them up, up, 
up to Spellbinder's magnificent castle just below the clouds. front door seemed to open by itself. But once he was inside, Hans saw a servant girl pushing on the handle. Her name was Greta. And though she was ragged and dusty, she was very pretty. What a comfort you are to me, my dear, cooed the sorcerer. And he apologized for any extra work that his apprentice might make for her. But the girl ignored the kind words, and she would not even look at us. Oh, well, the boy thought, I have better things to think about than a stupid girl. And in no time at all, Hans could think of nothing else but his work. Such was the demand for magic in the world that Spellbinder needed all the help he could get. And the boy gave it willingly. Spellbinder clapped his hands and called out orders. Hans ran hither and thither around his master's laboratory. He found weird ingredients. He ground up exotic herbs and berries. He stirred evil smelling potions. And he fed the greedy fire underneath the huge copper cauldron. There was another task also, almost too gruesome to mention, taking out. On the evening of the following day, Spellbinder called a halt. He dipped his wand into the cauldron and put on his sparkling hat. Time I was gone, he said. I must not keep my customers waiting. Sleep well, my boy. We have much to do tomorrow. And under the cloak of night, the sorcerer set forth from the castle, whistling and swinging his wand. the dawn and spellbinder woke him all too soon. Still he mumbled to himself, I am learning my trade. One day I will be punk, the sorcerer, and I will have an offense of my own. Sunrises chase sunsets around the castle, and as the seasons pass by, they stop to pay their respects to Spellbinder.
With the boy's help, he was fast becoming the most powerful sorcerer in the world. Hans longed to see Spellbinder casting his spells, but his master kept delaying him. Sometime soon, my boy, he promised. Yet somehow it never seemed to be the right time. So Hans planned to follow him secretly. One night, he waited until only the sparkles from the sorcerer's hat could be seen in the distance. Then he ran to Greta and begged her to unlock the front door. But no sooner had Hans stepped outside than the giant stone cat that stood guard there turned on him with flaming eyes and roared like dragons. And Greta spoke to him for the first time. Poor Hans, she said, don't you see? We are spellbound here by spellbinders. The girl had never had the heart to tell him before, and now she sat on the steps and wept. And Hans wondered, was there no hope for their future? And then the boy had an idea. He ran to the sorcerer's crystal ball and rubbed it furiously. But all hope faded in the swirling mist within the glass. to stop Spellbinder, but the boy knew nothing of the strange words that cast the spell. I know where they are kept, said Greta. And she led Hans to the topmost tower of the castle. chamber, she showed him their master's book of magic. He can read, she whispered, and her eyes were wide with wonder. At last, Hans understood the sorcerer's question on the night they had first met. But I can read, he exclaimed. Really, I can. Then you can be as powerful as he is, Hans, murmured Greta, her eyes even wider. That was going to take practice. So every night, Hans practiced. Of course, even if you can read, you can still make mistakes.
and Hans made many. Some were spectacular. to leave each evening, and that was his worst mistake. The sorcerer was not yet out of sight of his castle when he saw the telltale flashes of the boy's spells in the window. So, oh, spellbinder is tricked by my own apprentice. I see that he will have to be taught a very final lesson. And silently, the sorcerer made his way back. His plans for the evening had been ruined. But the world's game would be Hans's loss. Spellbinder would still have his fun and rid himself of his apprentice at the same time. Hans froze when he saw his master. How could he ever save Greta or himself now? But the sorcerer wanted the boy to try, so he challenged Hans to a duel of magic. I do hope you appreciate this last chance I'm giving you, you ungrateful boy, said Spellbinder. And a smile curled his lips, but his eyes were as cold and black as death itself. For Hans, the book was his only weapon. He could fight with the words it gave him. But they were words that were already waiting on the tip of Spellbinder's tongue. Hunt needed time, but his master had all the time and magic in the world. from the page and swam this way and that before the boy's eyes. Drop the book. 
table. Fell on top of it. It was then, out of the corner of his eye, he saw the words he had been searching for so desperately. <laughs> and in an instant, he became Never missed a trick in his life. When Hans looked up, he saw his master in the form of a spider spinning its way down towards him. Dinner is served, my boy. Hans ran as fast as his little fly legs could carry him along a line of words. And just as the spider Spellbinder landed on the page. The fly became Hunt, the boy, again. He grabbed the book and slammed it, spider and all. in a blinding flash of spells that was seen for miles around. And then the ground itself opened wide and swallowed up every trace of Spellbinder's power. The good earth, though, was not ready to take Hans and Greta for a long time yet. So they found themselves and each other back on the road where this story began. Beside them was the Book of Magic. You are Hunt the Sorcerer now, said Greta. And with your magic powers, you can make a better world for all of us. You too, replied Hunt, smiling. For my first task will be to teach you to read and write. Hand in hand, they walked into their new freedom through the early light of dawn. <laughs>